Hello, and thanks for joining us for the Pharmacy Cannabis Lecture Series. Each session is designed to deliver a small and in-depth dose of cannabis education. My name is Candace Hawes, and I want to thank all of our viewers and all of our customers from Bud and Bloom, from the Pottery, and from the Pharmacy Santa Barbara in Berkeley. Today, we have a really great presentation for you. We're going to be talking with a really new, really great, unique brand called Sunday School. With so many brands in California specifically, I think it's really cool that this brand is, has its own unique edge and it's very interesting. And they have a really great backstory that I wanna share with you guys. Our guest speakers today are the co-founder of the brand, Mia Park, and Dean of Student Affairs, Jennifer Tran. Sunday School, for those of you who aren't familiar with the brand yet, started as a boutique smokeware brand based in New York, created by Mia and Day, who are best friends since elementary school about them back in South Korea. They both immigrated to the United States and discovered marijuana at separate boarding schools. And 15 years later, they're transforming the stoner image through their smokeware brand and through their perfectly sized pre-rolls. Sunday School is an LGBT friendly and immigrant owned company. They partner with social equity license holders and they offer diversity, uniqueness and the perfectly sized pre-roll in three varieties, Eureka, Kickback and Nightcap. Jennifer Park comes from a background in corporate event marketing and worked in fashion campaigns and music festivals. She's also a lifelong friend of Day and Mia and joined Sunday School as the Dean of Student Affairs. Thank you both for being with us today. Thank you so much for having us. We're so excited to be with you guys today. Yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and start. Tell me a little bit about you guys. Tell me about your background and how you ended up coming to the cannabis industry and how you came to find cannabis. Yeah, absolutely. I think individually, um, Jay and I have uh, our own stories to it. Um, but just to start off as like how the brand came up to the cannabis side, um, honestly, like just like Candace mentioned, we started as like a boutique smokeware. I am Korean, I'm Korean American, and my parents actually still live in Korea. So like um, the whole destigmatizing cannabis has been a lifelong, even until now, a uh, pretty stacked up process um, <laughs> within my family and I'm sure like some other maybe Asian uh, like Asian American families could relate to um, but that being said uh, like my introduction to cannabis was such an eye-opening mo um, like moment that I truly believed in the mission that the Sunday School carries as of now so and from fashion to cannabis side was such an easy transition because you know we're we will follow wherever our audience are you know our customers lead us to so you know, as a fledger, fledging uh, smokeware brand, I was claiming to be a lifestyle cannabis brand. Like our audience has been, or was uh, inquiring us a lot about like, hey, where are your cannabis like products? So we ended up really launching like um, our cannabis brand about like three, four years ago already. And obviously like we made a beeline to Jay who we've been friends with for a long, long time. And she's had her, pedigree in uh, the cannabis industry since the very beginning. So since then, um, it's been such a fun journey. We thought fashion was already uh, pretty interesting and challenging to navigate until we came to cannabis industry. So <laughs> that being said, Jay could also tell you guys more about our journey within the cannabis side and what our North Star is. Yeah, um, like they said, it's been a pretty crazy journey. We had pretty similar experiences as children of immigrants. We all had the same thing. We all did the right thing and then found out we wanted to do something more. We are at our heart weird art kids. <laughs> and this is our um, how we're like, this is our platform. So Day, me and I run everything here, which is sometimes surprising for people to hear, but we run everything from production, operations, R&D, marketing, everything you see here. And it's been quite the journey, but we wouldn't have it any other way. We get to control everything. And it's been quite the journey. We're super excited. We have so many fun products we wanna to talk to you guys about and everything, but above all, we wanna change the conversation around cannabis. And we thought the best way to do it was through our fashion line, our cannabis line. So, yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, I liked reading about your guys' story and how you felt like cannabis kind of helped you fit into like American culture and like make friends here. Can you talk a little bit about that? 
I, for sure, I think it's still the continuum of that friendship generating plans because, you know, like I, it, there's definitely a different spark when you meet another, oh my God, you smoke too type of a moment. So with me at the least, I came to America like first time during high school. So I was completely, you know, like fresh off the plane. Um, and that being said, like the whole side of cannabis is so stigmatized in Korea, which, you know, like I think growing up in Korea, we have been pretty much uh, told that it's the devil's lettuce or it's the gateway drug, you know, and I think still many of uh, many of my friends who have always lived in the States also have those type of mindset, which always surprises me. Um, but that being said, it was such a it's an interesting way to make friends and deepen the conversation because um, the way we also started the fashion side was neither they nor I or Jay have any fashion background. We've all had some other backgrounds and wanted to enter the fashion side, but that fear of creating something always held us back from, you know, quitting our corporate job and jumping into this creative sector. So what happened was we would just gather on the weekend, smoke weed and come up with just really funky ideas. And like what, you know, we thought like our friends would like, um, who are basically functional stoners. It's everyday people who smoke weed um, and they also like kill it at their job. They nail whatever the task they're given to. So we wanted to capture that moment that you know all of our friends kind of embodied and it was such a eye-opening moment when we were smoking weed and ultimately creating something and that's how we really overcame the fear of creativity and that's our tagline too obviously like you know with the background of you know all, all of us being immigrants um one of the other mission that we also carry try to carry like um continuously is just Sunday school as a platform for creativity, whether that's via, you know, pen and pencil through the fashion side or, you know, creating the perfect J for you guys. Um, those are one of the things that we continuously try to like strive for, um, the creativity booster. Yeah, that's exact. that does exactly embody it, you know, creativity and what you choose to wear and how you choose to present yourself you know, the creativity that cannabis brings you. Um, so that's really cool how it brings it all together. I know that for many, many years, actually, Eastern cultures have been wearing masks. Um, I know that you guys have a really new, cool fashion line of masks through Sunday school. Um, can you talk a little bit more about um, what influences and inspires your guys' designs? Um, like, who makes the designs? Do you guys all collaboratively make them together? Or? Yes, like yeah. Jay said, <laughs> it's just three of us. <laughs> and then we're the ones who are also talking to the factories. Obviously, Jay, um, who couldn't join for this seminar because he is currently in Korea, is also very, very involved in this creative process. Whenever we do lay out, like, you know, the theme, um, whatever the collection is going to be in the next six to 12 months, we put our heads together and try to come up with the cohesive message. Um, and I think one thing that we are also learning is that the fashion side has a lot of ways as in, because the fast fashion has been dominating, you know, like people's even consumers mentality is that, oh, there's so many like new things coming up every week, every day type of, um, you know, like, just fast fashion mentality. So yeah. for us, like it's really important to be thoughtful per each collection we're designing, just like you mentioned, Candice, about the Eastern tradition. Uh, we always try to melt some sort of our heritage in the design. And it's really interesting for us because um, even when we talk about the Eastern or Asian culture, there's so much diversity in it, as in um, Jay is Vietnamese versus like I'm Korean. And the way we also celebrate the the upcoming Lunar New Year was very, uh, it, it's, it was very subtly different. Um, and that has been also something that we're mindful and cognizant of because we don't want to, you know, we hate being generalized. So we shouldn't be generalizing <laughs> the rest yeah. of Asia too. So yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, I love your guys' designs. I think they're so cool and so hip. And like you said, Thank fast you. fast fashion is a big problem. People think I'm going to wear this like for one season, then I'll just donate or whatever, and I'll buy new clothes. But I think your guys' piece are like something that you really fall in love with, that it's an investment. It's not like a throwaway $10 t-shirt. You know, it's something that you're going to like love and take care of and feel really good wearing. And it has really cool features. I like, like you guys get, gave me a sweatshirt, which I love. I think it's just amazing. And it's a piece that I'm going to be in love with for a long time. Long time. 
Uh, but they have really cool things like this has like a joint pocket and a lighter pocket on the sleeve, which is just like really cool. I love all those little touches and it's not like, you know, smoke wear like you would like the traditional smoke wear that's just like 420 and pot leaves everywhere. Like it's very kind of, you know, um, subtle. It's very subtle. Um, so it's kind of like one of those things where like to know you have to know, you have to be in the club to be able to like distinguish that, hey, you're wearing smoke wear, you know, so it's, it's pretty cool. I'm really, really in love with your guys' brand. Thank you so much. I mean, I, we work really hard on it and that's why we decided when it was time to come to California because we didn't see anything like that in the market here. Um, just to kind of connect it, everything else. Yes, these little clothes has like a lighter pocket and a pre-roll pocket. So it came time. We're like, let's actually make pre-rolls to come into those yeah. pockets and stuff. It's a perfect so, yeah. transition to what I was just going to talk about. So can you guys talk us uh, talk to us about that transition? You talked about it a little bit before, but how it just kind of made sense. Your customers were asking for it. Um, so talk about this new line of, uh, not really so much new, but new to our stores, at least, um, your line of pre-rolls. For sure. I mean, like you said, when the brand story as a fashion brand, it was always a question, when are you guys going to come out with pre-rolls? But it took us a while to understand the pre-roll market. I've been in the industry since before pre-rec and lots of things have changed here and there. We wanted to come into the industry as authentic as we are. So we had products that we wanted to use. So right now, we have three different types of mini pre-rolls out there, Eureka, which is our sativa. We describe it as like a Saturday happy hour with your friends, that uplift feeling there. They're tiny, so you can have one right before you go out. You can share them with friends, which is super COVID friendly. That's kind of how we enjoy cannabis. We also have our nightcap, which of course, as we work hard, we play hard, they're tiny but mighty. That's why we created that. <laughs> and then the funny thing with the kickback is we imagine it as like a long day of spreadsheets and everything else and just having a little CBD to get you through the day. So that's pretty much our ethos going into every product we make. It's what we want to see, what we haven't seen before, what we really want for ourselves. Like um, this is a little sneak peek, but me and I have been working the last two years on little Asian edible gummies that remind us, yeah, I know, we can kind of show you guys a little bit of them, but they're little candies here, but we work really hard for them to taste like the candies we grew up as, as kids, <laughs> which has been really, really fun because um, it's easy to be tokenized in this industry. And it's really nice that we have gotten to the point where we can be authentically us and it's resonating and it's really great to see. That's cool. I love your guys' lifestyle um, shoots that you guys do too. I think it's so refreshing, so <laughs> interesting, so creative, and it just puts a smile on people's face. So I'm kind of going through these while we talk about um, the product as well. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just really. Yeah, cool. that's actually a marinated crab that we eat quite often in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> so we just felt like you know there are all these amazing dishes that you would not necessarily pair you would not think to pair with um you know weed but I don't know how familiar you are with mukbang which is like uh, this whole sensational like eating youtubers um I don't know if I genuinely agree with how much they can eat <laughs> but that being said like I I love we love introducing you know like these very traditional like unseen um just weird uh like heritage that jay and i have inherited <laughs> and pairing with you know like our current joints or things that you know people would find fascinating that's so cool here's I another one too. that was a, one of our favorites <laughs> it's just so cool and i think also um you know people, you know, with the same heritage as you, as you guys will be so happy to see someone like, you know, celebrating some of the aspects of their culture. So I think this is just really cool. So let's talk also about how you guys work with um, minority owned brands and brands with social equity licenses. For those people who are watching that maybe don't like know what social equity means, can you tell us just a little bit about that and why it was important for you guys to work with other um, producers that have social equity licenses? For sure. So let's start with social equity. So in NorCal, it might be a little bit different than SoCal, but equity brands are those that have been granted licenses that have 
members that have been disenfranchised by the drug wars or incarcerated. And to us, it means everything. I am born and raised in Oakland, California. Mia now resides in Brooklyn. We see cannabis in a whole different lens and we wanna give back to the community that actually made this possible for all of us. We work with SF Roots who aren't just any equity brand, they're friends of ours and we trust them. What we hope to do in the long run is inspire other brands to create platforms for these brands. We have to have more visibility and representation. That's the only way that we can fight some of these tokenism things that do happen in the industry. I always say this diversity for the sake of diversity doesn't do much, <laughs> not at all. And we're hoping that with brands like ours, with our commitment to community, social equity, that we will be more than just for bigger brands to know that we're just not just trying to check off boxes. <laughs> We're way more than that. So yeah, I'm super excited that not only do we work with SF Roots as a social equity partner, we have manufacturers in Oakland, my hometown. We work with friends who have similar backgrounds like us and it's just a great ecosystem. Like I said, um, me and I have kind of floated around cannabis for a while before we came together. And the reason we came together was we saw it was representation We're like, wait, you're kind of like me and I'm kind of like you. And we hope with that, we will be able to break social stigmas in cannabis. One of the things that have made me really proud is when I started in cannabis, it was a horrifying situation for my parents to find out. <laughs> <laughs> they know to law school and going to this was a huge thing, but years later working with my good friends, we're able to create a product where my mom now can enjoy. So that's what we're hoping with everything we're doing with our company. You know, I definitely think that's true. And when you um, when you have brands out there like yours that are celebrating your culture and, and showing that people, you know, of all ethnicities can be successful in this. And it's not just the stigmatized, you know, oh my gosh, you're going to go to go in the cannabis industry. Like this is something you can be successful with. And one day, who knows, you might be more successful, you probably will, than if you did go to law school. And you're going to be probably a lot more happier at the end of the day too. And so I think that is going to slowly over time change, you know, the stigmatization behind cannabis and those that work in the cannabis industry, for sure. For sure. We really hope that obviously it's, an even bigger mission. We want to obviously change things here, but hopefully with movements here, we'll be able to change things back home, which have way more stringent laws. The drug war is still very much alive in Asia and all around the world. So yeah, little by little, we'll get there. Tiny but mighty. Definitely. Yeah. I love companies that have a purpose, you know, that have an altruistic goal besides just, you know, providing great cannabis to people to make them well and providing great careers for themselves, you know, that have a bigger picture, you know, that want to um, you know, help improve the lives of others in many different ways. So that's really cool. Um, let's talk a little bit more about like your creative marketing and some of the things that you guys have done in the past. I read this article in Forbes that you guys had like a series of like pop-ups. We had like art installations and like really cool things. Can you talk about that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously uh, before COVID, <laughs> we <Yeah. laughs> love throwing experiential like physical uh, marketing, which honestly, I think a lot like like almost every like 100% of those um, were able to translate into the digital space as of now. So we like I can we can tell you more about like what we've been up to and like in terms of like not losing the touch with our audience and customers on the digital space. Um, but going back to like the really fun times, <laughs> we um, when we launched our cannabis um, like six months into, we also like uh, in parallel prepare for this amazing pop-up. And it was like a basically like a seven day pop-up where we call this Sunday Cave because, you know, we uh, thought about the, um, the whole like the world, the, the first collection that we ever made going back to literally the beginning of Sunday school was called Genesis. And it was basically reimagining the world when God created this world uh, in each day of the seven days. What if he was high? It's like, what would he have created? <laughs> I love that. That's so cool. For sure. And, you know, we then started thinking about, you know, like an Asian Adam and Eve. So all those funny, fun, just like tongue in cheek type of uh, like, but thoughtful play came into like our first collection, which was picked up by surprisingly, uh, like, you know, very amazing publications. And that's how we kind of made the breakthrough. But so just as an extension of just coming also going back to like that, you know, the, the mindset of the inception. So we built this 
cave thinking about like seven over the seven days like what are the day, daily activities daily pop-ups uh in collaboration with local artists we can do so for instance one day we may we have like a clay ashtray making class we called it a pot head class because it was a pottery class <laughs> and basically we spoke our tiny but mighty joints and we had this amazing Korean also female artist a clay artist uh, her name is Melly from Malang Malang Clay and essentially we um about like 42 people uh, we sold 42 tickets for like three dollars just so we can cover her profit but it was basically making like a little cute ashtray um when we are like you know exuberant with our creativity via the cannabis so so I think all those type of little activities really built up to ultimately, you know, like embody and reflect the the thesis that we started with, which is, you know, cannabis uh, creativity through cannabis. Um, and that was really the theme of that physical pop up in downtown LA. And, you know, lately, obviously, with the COVID restriction and to make sure that everyone is staying um, safe, we've moved a lot of that into like our Instagram, our email marketing, um, also like we do constant surveys so that we uh, get feedbacks because that's what we miss the most as in like we love interacting with our customers. So if you send us a DM on our Instagram, like we will respond to you. Like it's actually also three of us, Day, me and Jay, on the other side of Instagram and we love interacting with our customers, let it be, um, you know, on the fashion side as well as cannabis side. And I think that's the only way to really improve any sort of company um, or any organization is really getting like the audience's feedback. Uh, and we, we miss that because, you know, via the physical marketing channels, we were able to collect all of the, a lot of the feedbacks, but we're trying to obviously um, make sure that we continue that through like IG Live, obviously this sort of webinar um, and what that we're really, really grateful for. So please like send us any Q&A also like if you're listening to it um, and we'd love to answer those questions too. We had one question that actually did come, come through so far and they're asking if you guys have been involved at all with legalization efforts in, in South Korea. If you can talk a little bit about that, if you know uh, there's any kind of movement going on there. Yeah, of course. I mean, the very good news is that uh, I believe there has been a bill that passed to legalize C hemp CBD. Um, but honestly, it's such a big step for Korea because even any sort of mention of hemp or cannabis or, you know, that lineage of the genealogy uh, within that herbivores, like it just was so, so restricted. Um, so I think it is some sort of a step, just like Jay mentioned, tiny but mighty step towards some legalization. But that being said, the bottom line is it's strictly, strictly prohibited still. There are so many, um, like, you know, a lot of let's say like uh like forward thinking artists or singers like who uh have ex been exposed to like cannabis overseas and the per the law the funny thing is that if you smoke uh let's say cannabis like legally in california but come back to korea so if they can prove that you have smoked it, they have the authority to arrest you in Korea. So it's really still strict. Um, so I would definitely not advise anybody to go around smoking weed in Korea, but we sh I, I'm hopeful because of the first step of the hemp CBD. I also know though, like many other countries such as um, Thailand just started legalizing medical marijuana. So hopefully with all these kind of movements uh, within, you know, also like the East Asia, like Southeast Asia nations, um, we'll see some progress within the next few years. Yeah, I definitely think so. I think a lot of countries are watching what other countries are doing. Um, I think it's only a matter of time though. I think in the next 10 years or so, um, yeah. we could be looking at a whole host of new countries that allow it, but still right now, very scary. The fact that just if you have internal possession of cannabis coming back in the, the country that you could face penalties and jail time, that is just really scary, you know? And that's like a human rights issue too, you know? Yep. Jay, do you know anything about like Vietnam or Japan? Uh, like, do you know anything? For sure, what to play off what Candace says, they are watching the markets. They're watching what's happening here, what's happening in Europe and everything. So more than ever, it's important for brands like us to just exist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think yep. representation is how they're going to 
like model their laws. And I'm really seeing a lot of progress in South Asia and more um, South Asia because of like what's happening in Thailand, but they are closely monitoring European markets, can Canadian markets, and hopefully they're looking at us. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And what's interesting is that, um, you know, so we have been trying to sell our or we had sold or let me rephrase it. We have some stockists in Japan that we sell our clothes to. And we've been really wanting to go to Korea to wholesale our fashion side merch. And before, like they've always been really scared because our literally our logo, there is a Korean character in the middle and it, it says um, dar, which means cannabis, like weed in Korean. So um, like a lot of the, like the top retailers in Korea would be very hesitant to carry our products about like two, three years ago. But now like they're like, actually it's interesting. Like I think I could actually convince my buyers to bring you guys on board. We've been hearing some of these feedbacks that are opening up in terms of at least culturally and like it just at least idealized that, you know, it is permissible. This is not totally like a like complete like crack cocaine drug, you know, like it's ultimately plants, you know, it's a totally natural plant. So it's, what's fascinating for us, for me and Jay to observe is that people's kind of the barrier is more easily broken via the fashion side, rather than me kind of like shoving in their faces. This is our cannabis products. Because like, you know, there is that internal fear that has been just, you know, implanted for ages and ages by the government propaganda and whatnot. And to kind of let their guards down, the fashion side is so fluid in in terms of seeping into their minds and actually opening their like very close mindset towards cannabis and I think Sunday School what's really unique about us is obviously beyond our own um, stories how we came together is that the we're both fashion and cannabis company and you know one of the things that we've really been wanting to prove to ourselves when we started both business is that let's see if we can cross market let's see if there's any overlap within like you know like the 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 creative people creative friends that we have and also like people who love smoking and I think that's a way that we're proving ourselves like by seeing the Asian retailers uh responses like towards the fashion side which is much more welcoming lately it's very interesting that's cool thank you for sharing that and that is um that is true you know that there is other ways like through art and through creativity and through fashion where you can kind of like slowly kind of creep in there without you know directly trying to put something you know in front of them that's that's a good point uh, we have somebody that just sent a question in too he wants to know what advice would you guys give to a young creative person that's trying to get into the cannabis industry um i would say it's definitely the wild west so be prepared for everything <laughs> it's still a very um recreational cannabis has only been a couple of years and everything, but I would say be open to everything and learn as much as you can. Things are changing every single day. Um, I came in thinking I knew everything about cannabis and I'm schooled every day by someone else. And I think that's the mindset I tried to keep with me is like every day you should be learning something and make friends. I have never been in an industry where it's been so helpful, so supportive. There's always someone somewhere to help you. And yeah, and DM us. <laughs> We're open to making friends. We can probably point you in the right direction. But also be prepared to work really hard because everyone thinks it's a walk in the park when you work in a cannabis industry, but it's definitely hard work. Yeah, no, I, it's very rewarding, very fun. You meet a lot of the greatest people that you'll ever meet in your whole lives, but it is a lot of really hard work and it does take a lot of investment. It's not something that, you know, you can really break into overnight. Myself, I've been in the cannabis industry for 18 years and it wasn't until maybe three or four years ago that I got a really good job in the industry. So just don't ever give up. Don't get frustrated. You know, you'll go through ups and downs and stuff, but just try to keep a positive mental attitude and just put yourself out there. Like you said, meet people, find people that are aligned with you, offer yourself, you know, as an internship or, you know, there's lots of different ways. So. If you're passionate through all, if you're really passionate about cannabis, you'll find your way through it. And progress is not linear, especially in this industry. So mm -hmm. everything you said and more. <laughs> are you guys hiring interns? We had another question come through asking. Um, would you guys be hiring an intern? We're always open to interns. So 
it is, yeah, I think we are looking for interns in Southern California and Northern California. Again, you can DM us or um, hit up um, our emails. I think it's sales at sunday.school. We're always looking for more help as we are expanding our SKU line, our fashion line. So yeah. Absolutely. We love, you know, like our, like, uh, you know, any fellow mellow fellows. <laughs> so they can absolutely um, send us a DM if you are, if the person is um, absolutely passionate about it. Um, and I would just make sure that you have taken a note on Candice and Jay's advice you know, on the cannabis <laughs> entrepreneurship. <laughs> Very we're a very lean team that's what like <laughs> people are always surprised we're like yeah you're when you talk about campus you're meeting a hundred percent of the team right here between me yeah. and I yeah and so you have to wear a lot of different hats you have to be able to pivot and to adjust to times uh, especially what we've seen with COVID I mean who would ever expect um that this would be thrown at us and that the whole world would be changed so you know very important to keep in mind um, so we have another question. Someone saying, hi, I'm a fellow Korean. Do your parents and family members know that you work in cannabis and what are their thoughts? Have you guys overcome that generational barrier um, of the perceptions of cannabis? Um, he's recently been finding that it's pretty difficult with his own parents or with her yeah. parents. A female. Yeah. I'm sure. I mean, Jay can definitely tell her experience um i can i can share a little bit of mine just because i had my coming out moment very recently i've been you know we've been i've been doing sunday school for a long long time and i had just recently about like uh two years ago came out to my parents that hey actually i'm not doing that management consulting anymore the reason why i'm traveling a lot to california is because i'm running a cannabis company so um i think at the end of the day at the uh whether it's the deep-seated, you know, prejudice against the plants or there a lot of propaganda externally, like your family and your parents will always support what you're passionate about. Obviously, my parents ask me a lot of questions. You sure this is a good thing? Like, are you sure you're being legal and safe and whatnot? And I was able to answer their questions, which wasn't a testament looking back that I was so passionate about this. And I think my parents saw that you know resilience and my true you know um, passion towards what I was doing and they have since then become the biggest fan of what I'm doing and it does sound cheesy but I just believe that ultimately they're going they're going to come around like especially once you let them know like these are these are the reasons why I'm doing this. Um, and I think it could also apply to like recreational smoking as in, you know, like at the end of the day, your parents are going to understand, especially if there are very valid reason why you are recreationally smoking. So that was my very emotional slash nerve breaking um, moments uh, like lately. Yeah, I mean, it's, you'll hear this from across like cannabis. Um, the cannabis industry, especially Asian Americans in the cannabis industry, we have very similar stories of coming out of the green closet to our parents. Um, but it does come down to everything you said. As immigrant, <laughs> was it as immigrant kids and all that? All of our parents pretty much want us to do is to be happy. And I think the key to like really, the key to all of this is education and compassion, understanding where they're coming from, and being there to answer questions that they have real, that's realistically scary to them. There, there was an entire drug war, that a entire drug war propaganda that went on in back in their home country and in America. These are valid questions. And if you're passionate about it, if you have the compassion and you really put in the work for ed education, you'll be able to have these full moments. And it's so, so rewarding. It might take longer. I have had friends in the industry for five, six years now that just recently, it'll get there because they'll see how happy you are and how dedicated you are. Yeah, I definitely agree. And you'll be sometimes surprised. Sometimes you'll open up to your parents and they'll be like, oh, I knew that you were already doing that. Or, you know, well, I actually have a friend, you know, that's using it medicinally or so on. So, you know, it, it definitely obviously seems like it's a lot scarier um, when just thinking about it. But, you know, there's a lot of mainstream media now talking about cannabis. And so it has kind of in America anyways, it's a little bit easier because they get more exposure, but that's um, some really good advice because I know that it is hard in certain families. Um, 
Someone else is saying, just as clarification, does Sunday School do all your own design and prints um, or do you hire outside designers? And if you do hire outside, outside designers, how do you guys go about finding them? Yeah, I mean, it's a very much of a collaborative um, process. So obviously, like we have our internal team, meaning Jay, me and Day, <laughs> um, setting up the themes and whatnot. But we definitely partner with a lot of amazing uh, like freelance designers, like who we love having within our ecosystem. We love, you know, like highlighting them on our social media platform, because ultimately we do want to create, you know, like this this universe of uh, amazing creatives. Um, so the way that you go about is, you know, reach out, reach out to us via DM, or if you're, if you also want to reach out via email, where our emails are always open at counselor at sunday.school. Um, mm -hmm. So just like, you know, everyone's saying, just put yourself out there, like, you know, like send, send DM to us, like send out, send us an email. Um, and I'm sure like, we'll open it up and um, get back to you. That's cool. I love your guys' creative titles too. I think that's so cute. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> um, like you said earlier, I mean, like in a startup, we just realized that like, we just wear so many hats. So we might as well pick cute titles. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> I love it. So you guys talked a little bit about the, the edibles that you guys have coming out. Anything else that we can look for in the future from your guys' companies? Yeah, we have a lot of things that we're excited for. I mean, just coming up on, we launched during the pandemic, so we never really got our like all-star moment. So this feels like the all-star moment. We have a whole month plan for Lunar New Year with Ooh. art. Yeah, with artists across, like we have, Mia has been setting up all these amazing artists. We have a mochi donut artist that's going to make donuts based on our edibles. We've been looking at other little things like these really cool nail artists. So little things like that. And then going towards later in the year, we're looking at more wackier collabs with just our friends. <laughs> um, I yeah. think that we kind of let the audience dictate it and kind of how we're feeling that day. So everything changes every single day now. So I can't really tell you what's coming up except for we're going to have fun. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. You guys are definitely a brand to watch. I would definitely suggest to anybody watching today, go check out their website, Sunday school. You can see all their designs. They've got a really cool video there. Um, do you want to give the websites real quick? Like the, the two, is there two different websites or do you guys have one for the both the fashion and the cannabis? We do have, um, so basically our IG is like the overarching umbrella um, branding, but then we do have two websites, obviously one for like the fashion merch, which is www.sunday.school. And then for the flowers, which is much more informational, um, it's just the same www.sunday.flowers. So I think you guys can definitely check them out also at our IG at sunday.school. And we're, you know, we are self-proclaimed school. So we're all about about, you know, like learning and educating. And if there are any information that we, you think we should learn, please let us know because we're all about the customer feedback at the end of the day. Well, that's really cool. I really enjoyed this conversation with you guys and getting to know your brand and about your backstory and talking about, you know, the fashion side, the cannabis side, and also the diversity side. Um, I think that you guys are amazing and I really love your products and I really encourage everybody to check them out. Um, if you live near one of the glass house farm or glass house dispensaries, but in bloom pottery or any of the pharmacy locations, definitely come down. We carry their products. You'll definitely enjoy them. Um, and thank you again for being here with us today. I'm really appreciative of your guys' time. Like, like we're talking about, we all have so much to do. So I really appreciate giving us this hour to share with our audience. Um, so thank you again to all of our viewers as well for joining us for this episode of the pharmacy cannabis lecture series. I hope we were able to provide you some information that makes you better informed cannabis consumers. Until next time, take care and be safe. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.